I'd be like a squid shooting ink on you, but it'd be brownie. <laughs> I want you to put your hands together. There goes to the neighborhood. And welcome him to the stage. Big round of applause. There goes to the neighborhood. Alrighty, we are back. Welcome back to the uh, <laughs> Smoke Screen Podcast, <laughs> episode twenty-five. Why do those look so bad? Hell, if I know. I have no idea what's happening. Anyway, I'm your host, Alex Trebek. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and today we have Jeopardy. Um, no, I do have a trivia question for you, James. Oh, go for it. What kind oh, of shit. hobbies did you used to do? <laughs> <laughs> we, oh shit! <laughs> well, uh, it's, but first, it's boy, a good leading. Before you answer that question, <laughs> before you answer that question, we have a new Patreon. Oh, uh, thank you to Daniel Carter. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate thank the uh, you. support there. Um, you can support us there, uh, patreon.com slash the Smokescreen Podcast or Smokescreen Podcast, whatever. It'll be in the link on YouTube uh, for the YouTube channel. Uh, this is it. available on SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, uh, Spotify, and Podbean. Look, I didn't forget them. No. I'm doing good. You so, are. Yeah, no, uh, but for is real. Some ginseng? We, 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 <laughs> yes, exactly. In my in my uh, coffee Ginkgo this morning. Biloba. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, no, we thought we'd do a kind of a, I guess it's a kind of a simple topic. It seems that way, but I'm sure to lead a lot of places. That's what I'm thinking. Hobbies. Yep. Hobbies. We um, definitely were, you know, talking about things and uh, started talking about some of our hobbies and was like, hey, this might be a cool topic. Yeah. I mean, why not? There's, everybody has hobbies and, uh, you know, some are fun and uh, some you, you forget, you quit, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's uh, right. over time, which is really weird. Um, but yeah, no, we, we just, you know. I don't know how to even get into it. I guess I was, just you know, are we going in chronological order, like from kids, or just in general? Well, honestly, know. my notes I wrote past, present, future. Oh, so you got them all set up? And then yeah, you, I should have expected that. And then, <laughs> from from James. Then I actually have the definition. Then. <laughs> do you really have yes. a definition? Yes, oh, I do. I, I mean, I, look, look, he's got notes over here uh, with his pen and all. Everything's correct and in the right place and definitions. I just have. Notepad. I, I just that's that's my game. I just I'm so to... analog. <laughs> analog. No, no, that's good though. You're organized. Actually, I am organized. I just you for are. this, I just pretty much go. You're very organized off the top of my head. But anyway, so I wrote a hobby is an activity done regularly in one's leisure time for pleasure. Right. So not pretty simple. Not for money. Right. You could get paid in a hobby, but you're not doing it to get paid. I think that's everybody's dream. To yes. turn a hobby into, into a, a job, into yeah. a profession. So that's what I was going to say. Like is, it, you know, once you're professional, which the definition of that is just getting paid for something. Yeah. Is it a hobby? Ooh, deep philosophy. <laughs> I don't know. I do know this. Like, for example, we used to run a poker league. Mm -hmm. We're going to mention poker, obviously. That was one of our hobbies. Now, if we would have went on and, say, made a living, just whether it's $50,000 a year in, in Vegas – Playing poker is it a hobby? You're right. I, I I don't know. I, I remember when I was doing taxes, they would say that you know when people would do, they would come in with their small business and they would yes. do a Schedule C, and they would deduct, 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 deduct. Right. Well, you think that's cool, but the IRS, if they look at it and you don't make any income, I think it's for three years in a row, three consecutive years, they will say that's a hobby. It's not oh, a profession. Oh, right, right, yeah. Oh, I better think about that. Doing my so, taxes this year. <laughs> just show a dollar, I think. Yeah, right, I, I right. Think oh, I think you're good. You just need yeah. to um, turn a profit. And you can do two years in a row and then do one year of like and, 10. Yeah, yeah, I made $10. We are not. <laughs> yeah, we're not taxed. giving any advice. No, we cannot give advice. No business advice. We have to. That's the sad part is we have to say that. Yeah. You know, we have to say that we're we're not giving business advice. Or you're not giving right. business advice uh, because Damn. we're doing a podcast. Shade tree it. tax man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, you are a numbers guy and used to do taxes. So I did, and um, I've I've turned down a lot of people this year. I, I used to do one or two <clears throat> for some friends. And uh, I just, I don't know, man. I, I've lost my touch. I, there's something about it where I used to just absolutely love it. I don't know. I, I'm not into it as much anymore. But Yeah, probably because um, it's, because um, you like numbers. Right. You like numbers and that type of shit, but it's probably because it's related to the government and the pressure and the deadlines. 
And also, <laughs> I'm just, you know just a me. Guess. I don't like anybody like. <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't answer my phone. No. I, I, we know that, right? So what happens? You do somebody's taxes. They're calling. Four you. days later, they're like, "Where's my refund?" Exactly. Like, I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's not your style. I didn't think about it that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People have to call you and say <laughs> any uh, or you know or get. <laughs> oh, I need to add this, <laughs> and you're like, you get to, <laughs> you get back to them in 2023. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude. Sorry. People I show up at your house on the taxes. I thought we were talking about hobbies. I'm not sure how we got to taxes and we make are. fun of James. But, uh, the anyway. thing is, uh, <laughs> I actually have that on mine. Numbers, you know. Oh stats. yes, numbers and stats. I right, do. Right. I do have that on mine. That that's in my past, and um, in my present, and I didn't write it in the future, but I know it'll be there. That that's probably the most consistent one for me. And the the, the thing I. I where I wrote it on my past is because I put wiffle ball and wiffle ball nerf oh. nerf football. But when we were kids, I would always keep stats on the wiffle ball and right, nerf right. football. There would be notebooks full of stats, and even the nerf football. We would um, I would check out books from the library on like coaching strategies and st <laughs> stuff like that so i Damn, would you took this draw just seriously. x's and o's and stuff right right and it was just i don't know why i've always liked the, the back the you know the back the end scenes you're, stuff. you're like the db you're the database of yeah, every operating like system stuff. yeah so that would be your thing if you went into it you need to be a db administrator cool that's what you would be that's what you would love you would actually love that seriously yes I need to find something like yeah, that. Yeah, just go learn SQL Server, and there you go. That's your heaven. Because that's all it is, is tables and numbers. That's, and that's I, everything. I, I do love that. So I'll throw that out there for when I was a kid. Those are my wiffle ball and nerf football. Could play them sun, sun up to sundown. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, I'll go with the – we get the general ones out of the way. I, I, you know, sports in general. You know, I played ball, basketball in my life specifically. Um, but golf was a hobby of mine. I think a lot of people try golf. And uh, it, I was really, really good for a while. My cousin still plays. My cousin Chad, you guys have heard him on this channel before years ago, but he still plays. He's actually doing another YouTube channel now on golf. I, and love, how, this, I and, love that channel too. Yeah, uh, Golf Test Dummy. Shout out to Chad there, um, by the way. You can check it out. What he does is go through and he, he looks at different ways people are teaching golf as opposed to the traditional do this with your elbow, you know, cock your wrist you know 14 degrees this way and move your pinky toe that way he's it's more you know mental and feel and what actually works for the weekend golfer who don't have the time or the money to yeah try to swing like a pro who's out there he, hitting four thousand balls a day chad feels in as your test dummy yes he'll do the thing for you and say, he's going to test out different methods exactly so anyway golf uh because we used to play uh, you know, when we were single back in the day, we roomed together, you know, no rent, had jobs, obviously all that stuff. We played two or three times a week, if not more. And uh, we were on second shift, so it was, you know, we had plenty of time. And we just, we got really good. And I still would like to go play, but now it's really odd. It's one of those things where I went back a couple times with Chad, and I'm so horrible. And I used to be so good. Like, I mean, every club's the same to me. It's so weird. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Like it doesn't matter. Like my seven iron would be in the past probably 170 yards. Now every club's 150 yards. I don't give a shit if it's a two <laughs> or pitch away. That's funny. It don't make any sense. That is funny, man. So anyway, I still would love to go back and play some golf when I have time because I do enjoy it. But it's not. I, I just don't have time to take it seriously, especially what I do now. Anyway, well, I I do want to point out one thing. Chris looks like he's on a squatty potty because <laughs> I no I, I lowered came this over seat. here I know he I had did a lower lower seat for me I because did. I came over here he had the chair set up I sat in here I felt like a damn squatty potty. I was like on a Duncan booth here. my legs were dangling down I felt like somebody was gonna throw a ball and make me fall so I was like I gotta drop this down and then when he came over he had to drop down to be like me and then his knees are up at his chin yeah so so <laughs> no we're just no this is fine he's taller than me so we had to level it out hey speaking of these ewin racing chairs they're supposed to be helping us out with this podcast ewin i'm looking at you um yeah we're supposed to get when we, we move 
We're supposed to get, you know, all black chairs like that one, all in the awesome. same room. So uh, let's really quick, we'll mention that really quick. In case you're new here, we are uh, eventually getting a, a, a new studio set up when I move. That's going to be probably another six months at least now. But it will happen. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going done, to happen. Done deal. Done deal. Uh, we just, it's just another waiting game. So we're right now, we're just decided to go ahead and do a video for the YouTube channel, even though this is out there on all the uh, major podcasting platforms. But anyway, so back to hobbies. Uh, yeah. We mentioned poker. We both yes. really, um, really, really got into poker for a long time. And then we had an itch and played a couple months ago at a friend's house that we used to play with. And yep. still enjoy it. I don't know if I would play it every week. Yeah, we, uh, again. we used to not be able to get enough of it. Yeah, it was we, like... We, we could have played it all night, every, every night. Every night, all night. It was just one of those things you get into. It's one of those things where you come across the movie Rounders. Yeah. And then you're like, what is that about? I got to know what that's all about. like Because, you know, in the Rounders, the whole the whole point of poker is you play the person, not the cards. And we're sorry you hear the yeah. studio animals running through. Um and so that was intriguing to me, and then all the tales and the psychological side of it. Just yes. like we do on this podcast, everything we talk about is a topic, whether it's a true crime documentary or whatever, but it's really, we, we want to get into the psychology behind things. Right. So that's what was attracted to poker. And Johnny Chan was in the, in the yes. movie Rounders. Yes, yes. And, um, the, you know, so we got into, like, the history of the World Series of Poker, and then we started watching the right. World Series of Poker. And there used to be, I guess everybody remembers – at night, you could find poker on cable pretty yes. regular. We'd watch poker after dark and call each other or see each other at work the next day. Hey, did you see poker after dark last night? Yeah. So we were talking about it when we weren't playing it. Exactly. And then I remember uh, with the league, I started, I put the website up. Mm -hmm. We It was the first time we dove into like affiliate marketing because we started selling things on the website and they had a little profit off of selling yeah. cards and dealer buttons and all kinds of little things, card guards and all that cool shit. So you had the full setup at your old house. It was really cool. Yeah, it was. And uh, we had the the big table, the really nice chips that I wish you would have not sold. We and made <laughs> we made bracelet had bracelets yeah, engraved. We for had bracelets wins. engraved for uh events and all that it stuff. Was, it was serious deal. It and, was. And it was a uh, a cheap fun night. Like it, that's why people that was it. who, you know, might play more high stakes they like coming over there because it was a cheap, good game. Yeah, yeah. and and you could win a little money mm -hmm. uh, still because you know our binds were low, but we had quite a few people, so yeah, it was a good game. It was, it was fun. Um, <clears throat> I've I've wrote, and I and I'll do these, uh, I guess together too. Like I I when I was younger collected baseball cards and yep. comic books. Same here. Same and here. I guess I, I should say sports cards because football, I did collect football yes. cards too. And um, the fun thing about, you know, card collecting for me is there's a million different ways to sort and organize your cards. Yes. I could do it by, um, obviously you can do it by the uh, manufacturer, but I would do it by like teams. And wait a minute, wait, you kept your tops and Donruss together yeah oh my god i can't believe that it's it's crazy ain't it yeah um, for you i know but I, I couldn't do that I, I did the same thing but i had my top sets and my donor sets now and you fleer i did have like a a big giant box um, and I, I mentioned this before all my cards and comics were stolen but i did basketball and football and mostly baseball early on but i had a big uh, box of all rookies so they were probably mixed but everything else was Always separate, man. I know. I, oh, that gets on my nerves. It, it does look weird. It's, <laughs> it's, it was different. It was weird to uh, get used to. But well, I'll, I'll tell you one of the coolest things my dad ever did for me. I remember he asked me, uh, "What what's your favorite color?" And I told him green. And then the next time I went to his house to stay with him, he had gotten, I guess, from a flea market or something, one of those wooden uh, drink crates. Yeah, yeah. And he sanded it down made it really smooth and he put a plywood lid and a latch and a lock on it oh cool so i had this wooden box that had all these little compartments in there right right and so i could put the teams in their own little slot it was really cool yeah we used to have a uh, one of our friends our mutual friends actually um that worked with us he owned a little shop up in up in town mm -hmm. and uh that's where we'd ride our bikes up to and you know buy from him or trade cards or whatever back in the day uh, that was the cool thing about cards and comics was the shops. 
I agree. It's yeah. The cool thing about anything like that, as far as collecting stuff, is the shops dedicated to that, and they're all gone for the most part. I mean, there's a few here and there. We do have one in town we talked about before. Yeah, it's more of a collectible shop, but there's some cards and comics in there. But those were fun when you can go in and you're looking through the big glass cases. Ooh, there's a Don Mattingly. I gotta yeah. get that one. And you're always having good conversation. Yeah, somebody's in there. It's almost like the barber shop. It, it's like that is like the barber shop. Yeah, for kids. It is like the barber and, shop for kids. You know, and, and uh, card collectors. And somebody going to be there on the counter with a Beckett, you know, looking <laughs> yes, through there. Yes, I'll give you that for, you know, it's listed here for twelve eighty five. I'll give it to you for 7 Yeah. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Yeah, you learn bartering and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely, you do. Um, yeah, I didn't think about it that way. That's life lessons it, there it in really baseball is. cards. I miss those, yeah. those little shops, little hole in the wall. That well, all I got is everywhere. $5, man. Come on, you... Come on, let me give. I'll give it for five dollars. Ain't nobody gonna yes, buy that card. That's right. I've been looking at it for three months. Yeah, it's not you, moved exactly. That's nobody, right. Yeah, you do learn that too. You do learn that. Like that card's been in here for damn two years. That's right. He's boy. trying to lead that price up there at fifteen dollars. Come on, man. So yeah, no, that, it's fun. And um, I would still probably have my stuff. I, I, well, yeah, I would still have. It. I don't think I'd ever have sold it off if it wasn't stolen. So I would still have my baseball stuff, my especially my Jordan basketball stuff. But I had old Hank Aaron's and all kinds of you know really good stuff. It was just all gone. The whole damn closet full, man. Well, it I still s- hurts my feelings. Obviously, <laughs> I still like cards. But, yeah, you still have a few, and we have uh, you know you have these videos. You know, I'll, I'll watch people open cards. I have yes. open cards. Yeah, you. Yep, and. What kills me is is this, and and I'm not trying to dog anybody. <laughs> yes, you are. But when I was young, <laughs> let's say I was 15, 16, and say my buddy had his license, and we would drive through the card shop, right? Right. You'd see these kids in there, like eight or nine years old, with their dad, and they're buying them every damn card every set everything right and i'm down there with trying to figure out how to stretch twenty dollars exactly. kind of like you were talking about earlier yes and i'd look at those kids and they'd have their atlanta braves hat on and their jerseys and everything and i'm like <laughs> exactly. you lucky little bastard you have no idea how exactly. good you got it well those kids grew up and they do videos now oh that's, and a, them that's bastards, a good point <laughs> they still don't know how good they got it <laughs> No. They get these boxes that they're going to open and go through, and they'll say, I paid $3,000 for this box. Right. And then they'll take a box cutter and cut an X on it to make the pla- to break the plastic off of it. Oh. And it just, it that irks me so bad watching them scratch that. I know, because and, part of collectibles are the packaging. Yes. Same with shoes. I'm a, I'm a shoe head. Yeah. You know, shoe Could collector. Could you imagine? That's the box is part of what right. you buy. So then they go through the box. They're looking for a certain rookie. Yeah, right. You know, right. And, and and they're flipping through, and I'm watching, and I'm wanting to see some of these cards. I'm like, oh, oh, there's Steve Carlton. Oh, God, right. they're, And they're not – they're <laughs> Ken Griffey Jr. You know, yeah. those kids <laughs> – who only cared about Ken Griffey Jr. back then? Still, right? You know what I mean? Oh my God! It so that, hey, crazy. That, that explains it. You just explain, explain the phenomenon on YouTube, then. Yeah, you know, those those trip. kids that had the parents that went and started their collection for them. Yes, you know. Here, let's take a couple hundred dollars and we'll get you a collection instead of. That's what a collection is. You're not collecting if you're just buying it no, all at once. You're not. That's right. That's what the word collection means. Yeah. It's like uh, a lot of people back in the day, you know, cards were ridiculously priced. It was like stock. You could, it was like buying stocks. Yes. You could buy a card, a rookie card, and it was an investment. It literally was an it investment. Was. Uh, it was. It's hard to believe now they're so low. Yeah. I mean, I remember when you'd go buy a box, if you got lucky enough to buy a box because there was oh, a rookie gosh, in it. Yeah. You, you knew there was going to be three or four rookies in there already worth $20 a piece. Already. And then you could – trade those keep the best one of those exactly and now you got leverage to exactly you got one or two to hang on to and you got mm-hmm. three or four to trade or whatever and now it's, they're just nothing i mean i was so shocked the last time in you talked about cards and looked up some prices because i have my beckets are probably from 1993 right it's probably the oldest beckett i got or the newest beckett and i got i should say and see prices were still good back yes then. and mm-hmm. now they're just worse it's like what it's so, terrible. You would I don't think know. if you held on to those cards, they'd be worth a lot now. They're not. No. But again, I did not collect them for the money. 
value. I, it was nice to be able to say you had a $20 card. And I did pay attention to the prices. I always got Beckett's. But that wasn't why I was buying them. I bought them for my own reason. Everybody has their own reasons. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. that's that's the thing. I'm not trying to dog anybody. It was just an observation. All right, go but ahead, That's Chris. the cool thing about, uh, you know, hobbies and collectible hobbies is that's what it is. Uh, I didn't do it for the price either. Um, yeah, you wanted to – you kind of kept a tab on – Yes. Like, I got my collections worth yes. about this much. About this but, much, yep. You know, and just in case, you know, you did ever want to sell it all or whatever, but you didn't do it for the money. I mean – That's right. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, so – uh, let's see. Back in the, I guess a big one for me in my life has been martial arts. Um, I guess it was, it's, it's, it's considered a hobby for me at the time. It was a way of life. I mean, I got that deep into it. So, uh, and eventually I did actually run a school for three years. So I did it professionally right. for that, for that amount of time. So it was really a big thing for me, really important in my life. Um, and it's so good for you. I, I still tell every, people today, a, a few people ask me occasionally to find out my background, They'll ask me, you know, what's where to put their kids or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just remember being a kid, and Bruce Lee was one of my heroes. You oh, know, yeah. as, as a kid, and and so I started with kung fu. I found that there was a, a guy teaching at the Y, and I don't know how legit he was at the time or anything, but we got the nice, cool kung fu, you know, Bruce Lee style, big sleeves. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, actual Chinese uniforms. It. And I actually have an, an another one in there, a really nice one in my closet still. But I started with that, and but I, I came across this magazine called uh, Black Belt and another one called Ninja. Mm -hmm. And I discovered this cool, sneaky, you know, clad in black warrior that threw these cool things called ninja stars <laughs> yeah. you know ninja before stars. you learn the shuriken name <laughs> and i found this guy named stephen k hayes we talked about that actually getting stephen hayes on here for we did, a podcast yeah. my old teacher anyway when i was a kid that was the plan he was in ohio back from japan fresh from japan learned this actual ninjutsu art and everything and came back to america started doing you know spot uh, basically he never had a school till very recently actually in his career but he did seminars and my whole plan was I'm going to turn 18 and I'm going to pack my shit and I'm going to go to Ohio and learn from him directly. Like a lot of people did. And a lot of people that did that are still to this day teaching and they made a lot of money because it was a big ninja right. boom in the eighties. You know, the big ninja boom. There, there was a boom. I remember the, um, like American Ninja, the movies. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they were all, even though you knew they were wrong, they were all good. They, they, are, they were good for our age, our yes. age bracket. It was awesome to it watch those movies, you know. And, yeah, somebody could jump Shokasuki. 20 feet up into a tree. You know, yeah, it doesn't seem realistic. But, yes, what it was – I mean, hey, hell, Jean-Claude Van Damme came out. And Steven Seagal, right. both those names are jokes now. They are. It's really – yeah, those I, they are. Those names are jokes are. now. But they put out those movies, and I happened to be right at the perfect age, demographic, yes. everything, me and my friends. We would rent those VHS <laughs> – and you know, right. watch them all. It's fun. Yeah, it no, good. Blood I, I mean, sport was awesome. That was part of going to the video store. You'd have to have at least one uh, Steven Seagal movie yeah. or, or whatever in your pile because you got a pile for the weekend. Yeah. Chuck but, Norris lasted. Yeah, you know, he his did. name is not a joke. No, well, Steven but, Seagal is a joke in the sense of kind of what he's doing now and you know who he's become. Yeah, his personality, but yeah, his personality. But he's legit. He was he a legit martial legit. artist. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Uh, for as far as Aikido goes. But no, man, I just really, really dug it. And then, you know, like I said, as a kid, um, I always said, I'm going to get my black belt. And it wasn't until 1995, 94, 95, when I was actually started to take real ninjutsu. And then 96 before, I, you know, a school opened in this state. Right. So that's when I started. I mean, and literally that weekend, as soon as I saw, boom, that that's this Quest Center's open up in Chapel Hill, I was gone. I mean, literally the next day I was up there knocking on the door. And uh, I didn't look back until, uh, until like I said, I had to shut down the school in 2008, I think it was, 2009, when the economy crashed. And um, had to, that's when I went back to cable full time yeah. at Time Warner. I remember, uh, well, like when we started this, this podcast right here, we said, you know, the dream is to turn a hobby into a, yeah, a profession. Yeah, that, that was it. And you did it. And you loved it, you know? Absolutely. I mean, that that and was I, a dream come true. 
<laughs> it really was, and I still I still think about it all the time because mm-hmm. especially as we're we're talking about getting older and getting back in shape and eating better and all that kind of stuff. I've been mentioning a few times. That's always right there because you're talking about being in shape. I mean, because I think uh, there's – I'm not getting into ninjutsu here, but I, there's a lot of misconceptions about it, especially with the classical version known as Bujin Khan. And I'm not going to get into that stuff, but we did a lot more than people think. So we did MMA, you know, essentially. Right. Uh, we were we did modern a modern version. Yeah. Uh, learned the classical stuff too, but we did MMA. We literally did that when – you know the parent when the kids classes were over and parents left at night late right uh we actually put in our mouth guards and gloves and went at it and all that good stuff but uh yeah that was just a dream of mine as to just to have a, a earn a black belt and once i got that that was one of the greatest nights of my life it was really really cool i'll never oh, forget sure. that one and even you know second third degree are awesome but you'll never forget that first one because you know you busted your ass and literally bled for four years mm-hmm. to get that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Anyway. It's not on the same level, but you've busted your ass for four years now. If you get your play button, that's going to be a that, great moment. There you go. That is Exactly. That is uh, yes, very similar. Very hard. Very you similar. dedicated yourself to, you know, and that's going to be just <coughs> a symbol of all your hard work. Yeah. So, I mean, there's definitely, there's so there's nothing wrong with having that goal. I mean, no. it's not about, again, you, you know, the old thing, you'd rather have a thousand really um, engaged followers or whatever instead of a million who don't care. Yeah. yeah but you yeah. still have those goals because it is a symbol of that time and effort. So. I think it's important to set goals too. Absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. I, I've always known that. And I think most people do know that it's important to set, you know, short term and then long term goals and follow through. And I've, I've always pretty much sucked at it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but at least but taught my kids yeah, right exactly know? at least you know, I know it's right um but yeah that's uh in martial arts that's really important because you literally have these little you know every three or four month goals in the q levels as you move up and, and, and you it, can watch you're, you're learning you that you can see yeah. at, like in your school you would move the people's names yes you the, literally move your stick yeah, over and so it that's keeps going up and it, yep. it gives you something else to shoot for exactly yep um i i put uh drawing down. i did too did you I did too um, because yeah, it was a big, big deal for me. Me and my, same all here. my friends, uh, we would draw our own comic books, make yep. up our own characters, and draw our own comic books. And then um, my cousin Gina, who passed away, uh, she was the best artist in our family by far. She could have done that professionally, but you know, she was always into drawing fantasy type stuff, like right. Morris Vallejo type stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and she could draw some awesome, um, you know heroes superheroes and stuff comic book heroes make them up really cool too and so drawing because it says you know something done regularly in your leisure time right all i needed was you know pens pencils paper colored pencils what it markers and and i could you wouldn't know i was in the room i mean i loved to draw a lot when i was a kid yeah, uh, that's uh, one a uh, huge thing in our family too. Uh, as you know, my cousin Eric, you know, we've he's been on the podcast um, for you guys listening. Uh, he's still doing. He's he took that hobby to made it a profession. And made it a profession. Still doing it to this day. Um, one of the and, and so the, cool. And that was the the path I was on. You know, in high school, we go through. We were in the same classes. Uh, we go through and and I went to college and started. You know, majored in graphic design before I changed it to computer science. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a huge part of my life because I won all these awards. And, uh, you know, uh, what got me and Eric started, uh, and then Chad, of course, can draw too on the other side of the family, but his brother, Reese, uh, got us started. He was like uh, our big brother in a sense, but Eric's literal big brother. And uh, he, I remember he drew these these cool hot rods with the big flat tires. Yes. Yes. And he got me into that because he got me wanting to draw because I would see him just sit there with a pencil and nothing else. I'm like... You know, and then turns out I could do it okay. And then we just kept on going, and that's what I was. You know, when you're when you're told when you're good at something, and you're told you're good at something, yeah. And then you get awards to back it up. You think, well, I can do this yeah. for a living. Eh, not that easy for artists, obviously. Right. You know, the old starving artist mentality. But I got into computers and stuff like that, and then you, then comes digital art, which yeah. is a whole different thing. But uh, it was really important to me too. Um, so yeah, I was, wonder uh, how many kids. Uh, Take away art class at school where you have to show up and you're, right. you're forced to draw, you know, coffee cups and shit. Right. Today, how many kids draw? I don't know. I don't know. 
Um, I, I, I would like to know. I know. I'll, it, I know Chad's daughter does. I mean, she yep. paints and draws yep. and stuff. She's, and she's really she's and good. She's good. Um, but you know, as a as a you know, a pastime. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think there's probably still some people out there. I don't know it, as 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 much. Is when we were young, probably not. I'd say, man, because of social media and computers and iPads, it just takes up the time. It just so takes up that extra. There's time. no time to really do it. And uh, I would hope that the. I mean, I know, like, um, you know, when our daughters were young, I'm sure they colored and stuff. Yeah. But as soon as they got old enough, there was an iPad in their hand. That's or right. And so, and see, I'm well, who knows? like you said, he was drawing cars. Like I would even be cool. I would even think it was cool if I saw kids drawing like graffiti and stuff oh yeah like yeah that. absolutely. You know, it doesn't have to be like I drew humans and figures and yeah, yeah. you know spacecraft and stuff like that. Yeah, tagging but, was a big thing. Yeah, so but you know, I'd be cool to see that. You, you asked about the kids that you know Chad's daughter uh, Riley. She she has an iPad and all that stuff, and she still feel, makes time. Mm-hmm. But I guess she has a love for it. I mean, right. and she's obviously good at it. She's gotten a lot a lot better. Uh, I got her a, a watercolor set last year for Christmas. Probably never used it because she probably got the same thing from everybody because she was into it. And so she's learning to paint and stuff. Now. Even my friends that that I you know weren't that good of artists still drew a lot. Yeah, and, you know they they did they draw battleships. Yeah, and, and a stuff few people. Like that, yeah, you know? and a few people we know from high school ended up being tattoo artists. I know, and yeah, so it kind of translates really, over mm-hmm. to some of these little things. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I put drawing on there and. Um, as far as the past, uh, the only the last one I got uh, that I know you know about was when. Remember when I got into collecting silver and yes, no, doing got, that I got into coins. Yes, you know, yes, and you got me into silver. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun, and then I had to use it for the rainy day fund. And and this is going to play off another one I'm about to mention. Cool, is gold prospecting. There you go. Yeah, because literally, um, you you got me into silver. I started going and buying silver at flea markets and stuff. There's one local we go to or used to. Yeah, still there. Uh, places like that, and then you need to order a couple things here and there on eBay or whatever. Because then it started getting to the coins and to the big dollar. Like yes. you know, this is the whole gram here yeah, or you whatever. Get the ounces, you get the full the, ounce, and and the spot price had gone up. Yeah, it was up to almost fifty dollars an ounce. And then I looked the other day. It's like fourteen. Oh, I'm sure. It's crazy. I could probably go buy my whole collection so, back now for a hundred bucks, and then hold it mm-hmm. and let it get up to. And that I might again. do that. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Um, it's just like cryptocurrency. We've yeah. kinda, we've touched on that lately. And the, and the so, gold thing. I mean, it just takes that one little. It, it does. Um, and that's the thing, man. I took. I hated to do it. It was one of those things back in the day, though. But. All that gold, all those years I had been digging in the hills. Yeah, and just <laughs> collecting know? a little, little, And collecting little. a little bit at a time. I went and with that silver, sold all that, and, and had, I think I was, it was probably for a house payment. Yeah, I don't remember. That's, that's But awesome. it sucked. It does. Because I had my nuggets the first, can you imagine me out in the middle of Uori, in the middle of a creek somewhere, miles and miles and miles from anything, yelling because i found this little gold nugget the first time oh, when yes, i started I really imagine. learning how to prospect properly it's not Did just you gold say eureka <laughs> well yes because you're supposed to <laughs> that's, so, that's eureka so cool. <laughs> you know but then uh we found a we found a hot spot in yori man i'm telling you yori has gold everywhere and um, and it's really cool though it's a really cool hobby it gets you outdoors, you know, you're you're getting some exercise, you're not going to a gym somewhere paying money, you're doing some hiking. Yeah. If you want to really get into it, you're not going to, you know, you start off, uh, when you, especially in our county, we live in Cabarrus County, right. which is there's gold everywhere in every yeah. creek, and not just creeks, that's just where they're mostly concentrated. But um, you can start by just literally parking on the side of the road and just hiking down a little bit, just that's right. right off the road, and you can start that way and find actual gold when you know what you're doing. But then you want to get deeper to where people won't go, and that's where the gold still still lays. And you were talking earlier uh, when we were talking about gold prospecting and, and different geocaching and things, and uh, mm-hmm. and and you're just talking about you know how good it is for the environment too. Uh, Absolutely, because those people have a mentality of like you know taking trash out of the environment. A- absolutely, that's the uh, one of the first things that you know you get into gold prospecting if you get it to it seriously. You join the GPAA, the Gold Miners, uh, Gold Prospector Association of America, and all that kind of stuff. And their whole thing is, uh, you know, leaving the place better than when you found it. Because all you're doing is getting down in the creek and you're moving one pile of dirt and rocks 
from one spot literally two or three feet away. That's all you're doing. Yeah. But while you're there, while you're prospecting, and let's say you're gold panning or running a sluice box, whatever, when you get down to where you're, the, the, the heavy, heavier stuff is, where gold would be deeper and behind rocks, and we won't get into all that, but the point is you're finding all this lead, you're finding lead shot, you're finding fishing weights, all kinds yeah. of garbage. So, yeah, I mean, it's just like uh, we're, we'll talk about geocaching here in a minute. It's, their, their thing is, you know, um, trash out or cash in, trash out. That, that's their kind of motto. So when, you, when you're when you out there in the environment doing these kind of hobbies that takes you out to the wilds of places, you want to take care of it Yes, yeah. because you know, you're in it. That's, that's the beauty of going out there. You don't go gold prospecting for the gold. You don't – like I mean, like I said, I sold my gold later, but it was just a rainy day thing. It would still be sitting there in my little thing yeah. and, just to have it. It's about finding it. It's, it's not about fi- keeping the gold. It's about finding the gold. So you have to go out to these places that you normally wouldn't go. That's right. And that's what geocaching is about. That's and what's so cool about it. It is cool. When you took me out gold panning, I mean, obviously, obviously, when you first go out there, you have this image in your mind. Oh, yeah. Pulling a big nugget out. Oh, absolutely. You know, but once you realize And they're there. That, they're there, but yeah. <laughs> once you realize that that's not the game plan and um, what you're doing is – when I thought it was really cool is when you were, you taught me, you know, you're looking for deposits and, yes. and you started looking at the terrain and saying, okay, this looks like this could have been a dry Creek bed at one time. Right. And, right. Or, I mean, this is a dry Creek bed now. Yeah. It looks like it could have been a river or a Creek or something. Yeah, one you're time. looking for that round washed rock in yeah. the, embedded in the size, the way it turns and. And then, so it's an adventure then. It is. You know, so now you're out there that actually doing the prospecting part of it, and I I love that. It's fresh air. You yep. hear water running, and that's peaceful and it, it is. It is. You're just down. You'll be sitting there on a bucket just digging or sluicing or gold panning because that's usually the last step of anything, yeah. no matter what you're using. And you can just stop at any time you want and look up and just hear birds and there's just yeah. trees and that's all and the water running by you. Right. And that's what's so great about it and that's why I love this goes right along as far as a hobby, camping in yeah. general. Just yeah. outdoorsy camping. I've always been a freak about getting in the woods. I you know, if I had to pick beach or mountains or whatever, I'm going to the woods every time. You know, I just I like the beach in the sense of fishing at night, but at night. <laughs> I don't like right. sunlight in the daytime, a vampire. Yeah. I don't like heat. I hate um, getting beat down with heat. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I've got beat down with heat in, in you know, gold prospecting too, for damn mm-hmm. sure. But now, put, I put me in the woods every time. Camping, that's, uh, there's something about that. I, even if you do the car camping type deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you just go out for just a day or two and, um, you know, park your car there and put a little tent down on the on the uh, pad and grill. Yes, I mean absolutely. You can grill at home, yeah, sure. But something about getting out there and, like I say, hearing the leaves rustling and all that—it's just there's something to it. Throwing a line in the water while you're sitting there. If you catch something, great. If you yeah. don't, you're still out there. You know, with the lake in front of you and the woods behind you. And unplugged. I think. Unplugged. That helps a lot. It does. Uh, when when me and my buddy Baker went every year, um, for we went for a week trip every year for a while. We hadn't gone in a couple of years. We we talked the other a couple of weeks ago. We need to go again, but and we need to all go again. Man, you and Poe yeah, went one time, great. and uh, and Eric. But yeah, that was one of our things. Was uh, you know your phone don't work there. Right. It works on the if you go to a campground like car camping, yeah. it'll work right there. But once you get off that trail, basically you know 30 40 feet that phone's not working anymore right. and it's great because it's all it is is a camera then yes so when you're right. hiking down to that you know you went to that one it's about what probably a three-quarter mile hike yeah, yeah at least or, i I'd mean say. it's probably yeah. t- maybe it's a mile and a half a both mile, ways yeah. i don't yeah, there know there you go that's the way to put it probably about a mile like and a half that. both ways but yeah, you know it's a pretty a good little hill um coming back it's not horrible but when you're hiking down there with all that stuff you at least have a camera with you but you know, you're not going to call 911. No. There's not going to be any of that shit. So if you break your ankle, I got to kick your ass out of there. So uh, we got to be careful at our old age. Yes. <laughs> Walking through those creeks, man, slick rocks. Yeah. But no, it's it's worth the risk, though, because it's, it it's, uh, it's so <clears throat> relaxing. You could literally go camping 
and not take your phone, not use it, whatever, and reset your internal clock. You yeah. know, if you can't sleep, right. you know, things like that. I'm mean, telling you, man. If, even if uh, you just sit out there in a hammock and read a book. Absolutely. I mean, it's just something about um, unwinding. Because <laughs> even at our age, we were in the generation that, you know, didn't depend on technology. But we have adapted really quickly. Yes. It's become a, a integral part of our lives, too, in our age. So for us to go back... You would think it wouldn't be that hard, but it is. It's hard to let oh, go yeah. of technology it once you've adapted to it. It is. So, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Because, it's, it's, I mean, just cool that hobby. whole thing of, you know, reaching over here, and that, that's just a habit now. It is. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm doing it to check YouTube stuff and all that and comments and whatever, but it's still, I mean, it's when you go, when I go to, like we go to Cherokee, we try to go once a year now, uh, fishing and all that kind of stuff, and camping out up there and I mean staying in cabins in that case but it's still out there on a river and there's a fire pit you know all that stuff it's hard for me to not because they have Wi-Fi at the damn campground yeah it's hard for me to not like check YouTube comments or something I or know analytics or some shit so <laughs> it's, it, it's crazy to think <laughs> about like I used to love to read the paper I used to love to read magazines right I, you know uh, it's yeah when's the last time you bought a magazine it's a trip you know the bookstore has a ton of magazines, and they. But they, every time I look at them, I'm like, you know what that's for? That's expensive for us. You know what that's for? Good, that's you know. to get people in there browsing, so they'll eventually maybe buy something else behind the counter. Yeah, because they're not to, buying magazines. I used to go in there to buy magazines, like you were I talking did about the martial arts magazines. Yes, you know when I was so um, into like uh, or Fango uh, Fangora. Uh, is that Fangora? Was that? Fangoria, old yes. man, the horror magazine. Fang Fangoria. Fangoria. Yeah. Yes, I said Fangoria. Yes. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And and so all the specialty magazines and stuff, I used to love to get. And I, you'd never see me go a day without reading a magazine or a newspaper. And now those things are just obsolete. All old men. Yeah, you I mean, picture, they're, they're still people, there. They're just online. People sitting in their chair reading the paper. Absolutely. You know? Or you can, I can imagine my coffee. grandfather sitting there. Um, I couldn't imagine Papa sitting there in his chair with an iPad. No, doing this. It's a trip. No, man. there's not. He's not going to touch that thing. You know. So I there, there is something different about like um, e-books right now. Obviously, you can right. get Audible as far as audio books. They're great for riding down in the road or when you're taking a shower or whatever. You can throw in your Bluetooth speaker, uh, riding down the road, especially when you're driving or traveling. But there's nothing like just actually opening a paper book. I know. It's not the same reading it on an, a phone or an iPad. It's it, not at all. Even if it's an e-book where you actually have to read it. Yep. It's not the same. Even though you're turning the pages by swiping, it's not the same as like bookmarks and you yeah. know, maybe you're highlighting shit. You know what I mean? There's 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 a huge difference. And and our grandparents, you know, they didn't bicker and fight uh, as much amongst <laughs> each other because they had like one or two news sources. That's you it. Know, that was it. The, the, you know, one or two, uh, actually in the paper or on TV, one or two, exactly, or three tops, and they had shit to do. They were in a garden. Yeah, you know? That's right. They ain't on there going. They had chickens in the backyard. They got to go. Ever, <laughs> you know right. exactly. You voted for so and so. They didn't even talk about who they voted for. They were no. working and hell and no. Shit, you know they know that shit don't make no personal difference. Personal thing. Yeah, exactly. They're still going to go have. Their, they're not going to. You know, they're still going to work the next day. Yeah, no matter who gets that's, reelected. That's right. Man. I mean, the, people will take shit. I mean. You need to take that kind of thing seriously, but damn, come and on. And you could say to your friend, you know, a fact that you read in the paper, and they wouldn't be like, <laughs> right. what paper did you read it out of? That <laughs> exactly. is bullshit. Exactly. That's all you know, fake news. I read out of the same paper you read out of, probably. Pro propaganda. You know? <laughs> exactly. So now we've got, you know, <clears throat> so too many news sources and everything. We're just, our minds are yeah. just, uh, we it, need to it, unplug it, is what really, I'm saying. It we really need to blows unplug. my mind. It shouldn't surprise me, but it does. Uh, and not to stay on the news thing, but how people literally get their news off Instagram or Twitter. Oh, it's like, yeah. are you kidding me? Yeah. You realize that's a big bubble, mm -hmm. right? That's not, I mean, come on. Anyway, right. not to get all into that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so um, I have a couple more here before we Go get out of here. Um, going along with camping and outdoorsy stuff, I put shooting, uh, shooting guns, obviously at the gun range or mm -hmm. a lot of people around here, obviously in the South have private land in their own uh, yeah. shooting ranges. You're skeet shooting and target skeet shooting. Skeet yep. shooting and then, you know, just putting a paper target mm -hmm. up. Or if you, you know, if you have 
a lot of land or whatever, you can throw out cans or whatever you want to. That's right. Uh, that's always been fun for me. I enjoy it. Um, I think a lot of people would once they do it. Yes. But you know when you know you know when you're talking about firearms, at first they're scary. Yeah, yeah. But once you learn how to work them and how they work and how to handle them and all that good stuff. So anyway, and just, marksmanship. You marksmanship. Know. It used to be a th- class. Yeah. It used to be a class, and because it mm-hmm. was a normal thing to hunt. That's right. Um, I think. Um, I don't know. I don't think when we were in school, but I know my mom was in school. In high school, there was a class. We in junior high at Corey Light, we took a uh, gun safety class. And okay, at yeah. the end so, of the class, you went and got shot skeet. Right. So almost that the same as a, a concealed grade. carry today. Yeah. Uh, in eighth, you grade. got a little certificate. Yeah, that said gun exactly. safety. Yeah. And, and so basically, they were teaching you stuff that they expected your parents to teach you, but just in case they didn't, if you yeah, encounter yeah. a gun, because we're in Rowan Cabarrus County, well, right. Chances are you're going to encounter a gun at some point in the house. Absolutely. Here's some safety tips. Yeah, and I mean, it, we it was had really cool. It's like a week long course. You know, you know, back in those days, the the boys would have you know a truck with a rifle rack in the back of it, right there, and <laughs> wasn't a big deal. Thing. It's just a normal thing. It was. Um, so anyway, so, shooting was that's probably pretty common around here, at least. I'm sure. I guess that's a geographic thing. I will touch on like my pr- most my present hobby. That has come into my life. You've experienced it a little bit when I lived here. I really like cooking now. Yeah, you yeah. would not believe. Hey, I how have much these. I freaking cook. I love now. making fun of cooking. Uh, <laughs> no, I do. I, I like cooking too. I agree. I, I do. Have, I really do. The, it's, it's something I never thought I would enjoy, but I find myself making all kinds of stuff. I mean, from you know peanut butter <laughs> balls. Saying, to yes. uh, pinto beans to a casserole. I was just thinking I've about some cool shit. Not, I mean, you. I don't know if you call it cooking. And when I say making fun of cooking, I mean making fun of cooking shows. I yeah, was, yes. I was talking I, about the cooking with mean. Chris. Yeah, you know things on uh, the old vlog channel. But if you don't have actual ingredients, yeah. But you have like uh, I got some spaghetti sauce. Well, shit, I got some cheese. I got some American cheese. Right, man. Well, I'm telling you what. Rednecks can cook some shit up yes. when you need to eat. Yeah, you can you can make some you, shit. You came to my house the other night. I didn't have <laughs> shit. Next thing you know, we got we eating uh, potatoes with Velveeta in them. <laughs> hey, that was the best bowl of potatoes I had in a while. That was awesome, man. But, but yeah, I no, have, you know, you make the pizza bread, you know, pizza out of uh, white bread and, and spaghetti sauce and pepperoni if you got yeah, it, or cheese. Yeah, you know, or you cut up bologna or on ketchup it. if you don't have the. Spaghetti yeah, you can do that. You put it in the oven with bologna on it, yeah. or you know, some kind of sandwich meat. But I find myself at stores looking at pots and pans and knives and <laughs> I can stuff see, and I can see yeah I got the a pot out of Walmart I got a pressure cooker uh, <laughs> you know for Christmas I really that's something I've really started enjoying no I definitely and not frou food <laughs> cooking you know yeah. I don't, I'm not gonna damn <laughs> right worry about presentation so much and drizzle something on there and right make and clear look, and clear ass bowls yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make comfort food. That's yes. my thing. I love that. No, I've definitely. Um, I I don't cook a lot. I can cook. My mom cooks really well because my grandmother cooks cook very well, and I was around all that stuff. So I do actually know how to cook things. I just don't as often as I should, but I do really appreciate the culinary arts. Yeah, yeah. I really do have an appreciation right. for anything like that. It, there is. There is something to balance. You make a good pot it, roast, man. Oh man, that's that that's been recent. That little that, that that was a secret season I just I learned about. Yeah, you, you do. <laughs> you make a good pot roast. I mean, you yeah. can't really make a good roast, but you can make what goes on it good. Right, right. A right. roast, the cut is the cut. You it know, it, cut. It, you can't. All you're trying to work with there is the tenderness. And exactly. All that. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, so that's been that's become pretty much a weekly thing because it's easy. You know, you, you can get it, you prep it in five minutes or less. It sits there for four hours and then you eat, you know, yeah. that's all it is. But, and so for, you know, my present ones, the only ones that I've added is that in writing. And I know you've been writing too presently. So yeah, I didn't even think to mention two, that two that are like, cause like stats and all that, that's always going to be there. Right. But on the new ones that I'm into the most right now is writing. And I've always done journaling, but like writing, writing and cooking. And I'm I'm down with that. I, I'm 
feel like an old man, but those are my new ones. Yeah, no, I th- I, I think this fi- cool. Um, and the, I'll I'll quickly mention I used to bowl. Just to, I won't dwell on it, but I was in a bowling league. Yep. I still like bowling. I just don't mm-hmm. go very often. I, I think I'm still pretty decent. And I think I would be after yeah. you know warm up or or whatever. But we were in a bowling league for a, a couple of years, me and some buddies, um, yeah. mutual friends of ours. Yeah. Um, we won a bowling ball uh, in our league, actually. Got it, and that's the first time I had a perfect, you know, actual ball right. crafted from my hand. Yes. And I, I throw, I, when I learned to throw a hook ball, I really got into it. And me so too. I got pretty damn good. So I bowled for a while. I'll quickly mention video games. That's always been a hobby of mine, yeah. obviously, since we were kids in the Atari 2600. Yep. Yeah. To this day, I still stream on Twitch. Obviously, that's a so it's a hobby, it's a hobby, yeah, a type of thing. Um, and goes along with YouTube. YouTube turn it is a hobby now. It's a profession slash hobby along with Twitch and all that stuff that's as right. well. Um, obviously, well, that's all the thing. of this. Yeah, you know, yeah this podcast, video uh, you know. production, audio production, all yes. that has become a hobby. Yeah, and this you is a shitty a version of it. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, it's yeah. become a hobby. Yeah, exactly. So all this kind of stuff developed over just like I said, it started with a couple Michael Jordan videos uh, at at work really at cool. Microsoft. So this has all happened over the last five years, and so yeah, learning video and editing and all that kind of stuff, and now um, it's what I do along with the podcast and Twitch and YouTube together and. All that good stuff. But the current one, uh, as far as along with YouTube, is like I mentioned, geocaching. Yes. This is what me and you did a a podcast on three or four podcasts ago. That's right. It's really, really cool. It's so simple. Yes. But it's so cool. Um, It's kind of like what you were talking about with the outdoorsy type. It's outdoorsy. You're um, you're drawn to that. And you you end up in places that you wouldn't, even if you're doing like urban geocaches where they're, you know, under in a light pole somewhere right down, you know, at the Walmart parking lot or whatever. Yeah. It's still, um, the, the other ones take you to places that you wouldn't even know exist in your own little town. Mm-hmm. I have found so many little parks that I had no idea existed, trails. And you grew up here. That's crazy, you know. And, and that me and Riddick are now walking every day on trails. That's a good thing to do just to see stuff you haven't seen in your own town. It is. And so now that I'm starting to hide some, I'm starting to think instead of just what would be a cool looking place to hide it or a cool way to hide it. I'm thinking yeah. location. What could you possibly learn oh. if you like something somebody needs to see? Yes. Like for example, there's one. You want to draw them there. Yeah. Because, because that's know what it's geocachers about. will go to. Get, exactly. Yeah. Because that's what there's, there's actual cache types called geo, not, not actual caches where there's a physical container, but it's a, it's a cache in the sense of you have to go see the the, uh, the location. Mm-hmm. So it's an earth cache. I like that. Um, or it could be a statue or a monument somewhere. Dale Earnhardt is yeah. up there. There's one To right draw there. somebody to go there that you they need exactly. to see. It. Yeah. So it's really cool. It's not about the little trinkets you find. Yeah, that's the first question. Do you find money? Um, you can. You know, some people, when you hide one, they'll put like a $20 bill or maybe a, uh, a geo coin, which is a trackable thing. We won't get into all that, but... They'll put some kind of little prize for the first to find. That's cool. So you can man. find money, but it's not about finding money. Most of the time, it's going to be a log to sign, and then you use the app to confirm it, basically. That's right. But you know your name's on that log book somewhere. That's neat, man. And, and then you have the ones that have that are a little bigger, depending on the size of them. You have trinkets, and they call it swag. Yeah. And, you know, you can swap out. And I know you know this. I'm just saying. No, 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 will. yeah, I know. Uh, but, you know, you swap out things for other things. So it may be a little eraser or a pencil or a little toy or a matchbox car. That's it could right. be all kinds of stuff, and you swap something for something else. And then you got the trackables, which are really cool. They're trackable on their website and everything, and they might have a mission to go somewhere. So you take it from one place and put it in another, or you can release your own into the wild and see where it happens. Yeah, you know, and you've gone from wanting to find other people's to putting your own out there. Yes. And I think that's cool. Um, you got some neat neat ways to hide them. And so it goes in with your personality. You like going out and yes. to you know, nature and gold panning and um, hiking and things like that camping and, and it goes right with that and we looked at you know our camping spot here there's tons of them over there oh yes absolutely we need to you do know? that actually very soon um we need to take a couple of days and go up there when it's not too hot but yeah. not raining anymore jesus yeah we've been covered up with rain. i mean this has been seattle here for yeah. the last i don't know six months but yeah take a full day in the sunshine and just go you yeah. know and just do that because now it's like, I I try to go, like, 
because it's been you know too cold and rainy and nasty, I can still like go up and park and really go you know really quickly go grab one. Right. So I try to do that and get out, and I have to hike a little bit. And we've been like I said, me and Riddick's been walking a lot of trails. And so while I can't go shoot basketball to get some exercise or something, that's that's something. So I try to do a couple here, and when it's nice, I can't do it every day. But now I'm starting to have to move further and further out from my house. Yeah, you know, because the, you've done all the of them. smiley faces are piling up around me. There's still some. That's a good and, thing. And so now I'm getting further and further away where I'm like, damn, I got to go to, you know, Harrisburg or, <laughs> you know, or, or, or way up beyond and, China Grove now or stuff like that. And, and <clears throat> when you went to see your mom, you did some down there. Yeah, me and her so went out and did you four go. or five down there. She likes it. It's really cool. Anywhere you go. Anywhere. You can find them. So that's and one that, of those that, things where. Abroad. Yeah. Anywhere, it's yeah. not just the United States. We've seen videos of people <laughs> absolutely doing them everywhere. Uh, it's it's really big in a lot of places. Um, apparently, really big in Germany. But like, if you travel for work, all you need is your phone. You got the app. You're going to find them there. You just open the app there, and there it is. There That's they are. Right. That's uh, it, it's completely free. Is the point? That's it's the fun free, part. and you're going to see cool little places. You're finding little places even in your own hometown that you don't know exist. And you're getting out in nature a little bit and seeing things, so it's pretty cool. Hell yeah! I was gonna, you know, when you first talk about hobbies, uh, I was until I wrote the definition, I was gonna put masturbation on here, <laughs> but it says right. done regularly in one's leisure time. I always do it at work. Yeah, <laughs> that's so not not my leisure time. I guess, I guess by definition, just not a hobby then. <laughs> at least for you, that may be. I don't know about other people. No, I do want to touch on <laughs> things I want to do. Is that a hobby? <laughs> Is it really? I mean, I guess so. <laughs> well, if you just saw my 14-year-old, 15-year-old self, <laughs> it's a way of life. <laughs> um, Confucius say. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But oh, no. I put, I actually, my two that I put for future are travel and sightseeing. And, yeah, and I yeah. really, I really do want to do that. Whether it be rent an RV or something, I want to, I want to go out and see out west. I'd like to I see the Grand Canyon. I'd like to see Yellowstone. I'd like to see, you know, just exactly. Mount Rushmore. You know, different. Places. A lot of people want to run off to Europe, and I think right. that's cool too. Uh, and I would love to go to Japan one day. That's I'd go there before any place, but. I want to see my own country first. Yeah, there's a lot to see. There's here. so much to see here, and I want uh, to see Niagara Falls with my yeah, own eyes. Exactly, not not a postcard yeah. or something on TV. I've been out west of Vegas. I've been to San Francisco, but that was for work, and I was by myself um, in, in the San Francisco case. And at Vegas, I was 24, didn't really have an appreciation for other things, you know. Yeah, Hoover Dam. I did go see the Hoover Dam, things like that, and the Grand Canyon. But I, I want like to go to see now. The Dam, yeah. You know, I want to go now with these eyes. Yes. You know what I mean? That, I agree. So I think everybody has that fantasy of getting an RV and just going and having I, months to do whatever. I saw a but picture. Um, usually a retirement goal. <laughs> yeah. I saw a picture somebody had on their wall. It was, it was a couple. And on their wall, they had a picture, uh, this big cutout, wooden cutout of the United States. And maybe it was wood burn or something. Yeah. Between each state, they had all the states you know, engraved or burn in there. Right. But what they did is they took pictures of them standing together in each state and cut it out and taped it on that state. Right. Or glued it or whatever. So of like they only had about ten states done. <laughs> so right. you could see there's the goal right there on the wall staring you in the face. And when you're done, you got this wall of fifty forty eight memories and right. you know I mean, I think that's just – that's what life is to me is building memories. Yeah, I've always liked those um, maps where you put pins in there. Yeah, I, I saw do that. one. I mm-hmm. saw one uh, – My Eric does it for scuba diving. He's got mm-hmm. pins of places he went scuba diving. Yeah. He's got uh, green ones for where he's been and red ones for where he wants to go. I, I saw a, a product, and I was watching some random Amazon FBA thing where you learn how to sell on Amazon or whatever, and a guy had a product that was a scratch-off map. Yeah. It was a world map that you put on your wall. It was a gorgeous map, and it was a scratch-off. So when I've you went to a place, you scratched that. off that country. Totally forgot about it. Yeah, that's cool. That that's is cool. really cool. Yeah. Um, that would be cool to have for uh, for traveling. And um, before we wrap it up, I just want to say I wrote two that I would never do. <laughs> Damn, and they right. both have the word diving in them. <laughs> Skydiving or scuba diving. 
You um, would never scuba dive? Hell no. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. This. Eric's tried. The shark thing. I yes. know. I forgot about the shark thing. Dude. That's what you no need, way. though. Dude, you need to go scuba diving. That's no what would. You would be cured way. of your shark phobia. I, I, just impossible. I, that's not. I would never do it to begin with because there's something always coming up behind me. <laughs> If you would in the movies, if you would get somebody to come up behind me and touch my fin, my flipper, or whatever the hell you call it. <laughs> well, you know I would do that if me and you win. I'd come up behind you, and, yeah, damn. and you would turn around and laugh it off, and you'd be fine. I'd be like a squid shooting ink on you, but it'd be brownie. <laughs> it wouldn't come out your wetsuit though, yeah, dude. I could not <laughs> do it, and I definitely would never skydive. Brownie, <laughs> no way in hell. I don't know about the skydiving thing. I really, I want to, but I don't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother's been, and it's crazy. But, I mean, I think it would be so cool to be falling where you feel like you're flying. Because I know you get I, to that I velocity, agree. it doesn't feel like falling. I agree. It does seem like. I, and it would be so beautiful and gorgeous, and it would be a, the rush of a lifetime, I think. But, you know, the other side of it is just like flying for me in general on a plane. Yeah. Why, why am I going to jump out a perfectly good plane? Right. Number one. And if I do, and I know it's modern technology and it's going to work 99.9999% of the time. But if it don't. I know. <laughs> your last words are going to be, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is so beautiful. It, and then it's not anymore. Right. No. Dude. That's the thing. Fade to black. I don't get that. You teach people, you train yourself to be responsible your whole life. Yes, yeah, that's true. Wear your seatbelt. Do this and that. Right. <laughs> you know, how many trips have you taken in your car that you could have made it safely without a seatbelt? Yeah. But you had one on. Every single one. Every, every single I one unless you wreck. That's right. So <laughs> that's right. Odds that's are, right. <laughs> odds are, you don't need the seatbelt. But you, you know, train and coach yourself to be responsible. It's right. just a habit. You put it on. Right. Exactly. Right? Same with a. Then you want to try to talk yourself into jumping out of an airplane, uh, <laughs> and that's responsible. No. Well, I mean, what about rock climbing? Yeah, never. That, uh, let me write that on here. <laughs> I will never <laughs> rock climb. Wait a minute. Not even little short things. Maybe. Yeah, see, that's, Maybe, that's still rock climbing. But I'd have to have a harness and stuff. I'm never going to free solo like that one guy. Well, yeah, that's that's crazy. That, that is insane because you're going to, at some point, you will fail. Yeah. Period. It's perfection or death. Exa absolutely. I don't and like no those perfection. Yeah, I don't, exactly. I don't like that. If I'm you know, di skydiving with a group of people and the first time you have to go tandem – he at least he knows what he's doing That's or she. Right. No, and, and, and if, if, if something goes wrong, it. there's other people in the air that you can maybe fly over to. Yeah, because they, they can know how to get something loose or whatever exactly. they got to do. Yeah, because because uh, you're high enough to for some time. Maybe I'm just saying there's a chance. There's a small <laughs> chance. Are you, so you're saying there's a chance. I don't play Russian roulette. No, I just do not. I don't. I, don't, uh, I, I get. And, that. and I've told you I don't. I don't ride roller coasters. <laughs> I don't do things that most normal people. I don't like adrenaline. I think that's, <laughs> that's what it is. I really think that's what it is. It might be. Is that I that do simple. not like adrenaline. I guess that could be it. Unless my heart stops, then shoot me with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Epinephrine. <Boom. laughs> Jesus. Oh. Um, yeah, that might be at your core there. That might be it. I think that's I think that's really what it comes down to. But I do I find myself watching too many videos yes. when I'm cooking. I'll have right. shark attack videos playing. Exactly. And there'll be some guy minding his business down there scuba diving, his friends filming, and all of a sudden there'll be a close call, a shark fin, right. a big great white swim That's the past. thing. You're watching the like the point zero 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 one percent shit like that happens. You're, I know. You're watching the uh, the exceptions, I yeah. think, is what's going on. Yeah, you got to go. I think that's our goal here, man. I think the goal is to get you scuba diving. Feel, At least go in the ocean and swim. Well, I feel like I would like to go on a sh on a boat where they get the <laughs> sharks to come up and open their mouth and me stand over the edge and look. I don't know if my knees would be knocking, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. I, I would be nervous about it, but I would like to see a great white or a big giant Yeah, well, shark if you – yeah, maybe if you just went out, you know, they threw some chum in the water and you just see them come up and they're eating the fish and you realize that they're not going to bite the boat in half. Right. They're not going to jump on the boat, yeah. you know, and things like that, like in Jaws. Maybe I used that to would... think I might get in a cage until we watched 47 minutes <laughs> down. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, I would Mark do. I would do it. I would, I would definitely do a shark cage because mm-hmm. I know I'm not going to have some bu- bullshit ass equipment like they had on there. There's yeah. not going to be just one one little, table. Yeah, there's going to be multiples in case it breaks. I mean, there's you know there's laws for all that now, and you know yeah. safety regulations. I've had keychains stronger than the damn <laughs> thing that was hanging there. Exactly, they got it hanging by literally, <laughs> literally. It's just black thread. <laughs> it's not even a chain. I mean, come on. Uh, but anyway, now I would do the shark diving thing. I would do the free diving thing um, around small things. Really? I think I would. That's cool. Because I've seen too many videos, too, where you're swimming and sharks don't give a shit about you. You're you know? right. And Eric has put out some great videos. Oh, yeah. He brought back some great videos from his diving trips. Yeah, sharks and manatees. And yeah. that was mostly what his film. But there was always a couple sharks, and they never, I know. never fucked with them. And seeing those wrecks on the bottom like oh, he yeah, that'd be on, cool. They look cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm drawn to it, but, but I'm I, the same way. I mean, I do. I would go scuba diving, and I probably could talk myself into skydiving. But I just hate the idea that you know, if I'm 47 meters down, that that fucking tank, you know, oh yeah, that your kind of line stuff. gets cut. I, yeah, there's all no, kinds that of kind things. Of stuff worries me too, but it you gives know, me it, it's legitimate concerns. But I know the technology's there. But still, I mean, you know, just that technology can break. Would you surf? Yeah, yeah. I I have tried. I would never. I used to body surf all the time, but as far as a surfboard, I've probably been on one or two. But I used to boogie board all the time. Because that big... does happen. Oh, yeah, sure. They sure. bite boards. You see those bite marks on they, boards yeah, a lot. They, uh, they look like seals, apparently. Is yeah. So, so, I mean, it yeah. looks so fun. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I guess that depends on the location, too. Yeah. But I just, I don't really, I think surfing would be fun, but I don't think I would ever get into it to really care, you know. But I think I would do it probably cool. as long as i'm out there with a lot of other people because they can get bit first let's be real i know i, <laughs> I mean I, seriously. I agree if <laughs> i'm know? if i'm ever gonna do it there'll be a huge crowd exactly i, I, I agree got to does that mean the chances go even further down <laughs> you know? this might be stretching longer than we want to take it but i do want to say this because <laughs> i don't know if i've ever asked you this what do you think about you know riding a motorcycle uh yeah no I I've ridden uh motorcycles you know they look like cool to take trips on yeah I was I've always thought about because I used to ride a crotch rocket around it wasn't mine it was my buddy's when I had a roommate and I used to ride his crotch rocket around town locally mm-hmm. so I never actually had a motorcycle license so I never legally rode one but right. I've always thought it would be really cool to take like a cruiser out and do a trip because you a can trip on that you it can looks... literally pack a, a tent in your saddlebags yeah. or you can stop at hotels. Um, you know, you can, you can camp if you want to, that type of thing. That would be a really cool trip to me, but it would, right. ha- I think I'd be fine once I got out of cities Yeah, because city riding ain't fun. That's, that's me. It I think I might all. like it out. Like you said, on them long stretches, yes. uh, no, that would like be a that. fun trip. I would do that on a, on a cruiser type thing where once I got out of the cities, I can just go and I'm not worried about, you know, crazy ass traffic. Yeah. Cause there's too many idiots. I, I agree. There's um, too many damn because yeah. my dad late in life got that Harley. Yeah. and But he says, you know, there's some moments that get scary with road construction. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that where it says no motorcycles, you right. know, because there, there's ridges in the in the thing. And he had to ride on a stretch where it was like that for so long. And he said it was white knuckle the whole way. His anxiety was through the roof. Yeah, exactly. So, I, you know, but me, I tried to ride that Harley. And I remember just how fast it felt, you know. Oh, and yeah, I think that's something you could adjust to. Yeah, yeah. But again, that's I don't know. I think that's just something I'm gonna do. Because I remember the first time. Yeah, I remember the first time I got on a crotch rocket and got on a straightaway. And man, gee, you know, it's the first few times you're damn, you are shitting your pants. It's because you want to go, you want to experience it. I know, but you just know somebody's pulling out, you yeah. know, or that driveway or this road. And you go, you're in, 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 and by the time you're, you know, in second gear, you're at the stop sign. Yeah, it's so fast. And so uh, it's 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 fun at the same time. It, I can see the adrenaline rush, you know, p- junkies, adrenaline junkies, and why they love shit like that. But at the same time, I'm too damn cautious. I would be, I would always be the dude in the sidecar. If yeah, you know, so, <laughs> right. If, the sidekick. Yeah, if we you do seem that, to like that title. If we do the freaking um, <laughs> motorcycle trip out through the desert. Just make sure we have a sidecar and yeah. I'll ride in that. <laughs> well, that would make, uh, you know, I'd feel better about the sidecar. At least it's balanced. Yeah. You got yeah, three yeah. wheels or oh, four yeah. or whatever. Absolutely. Yes, there's four, so you don't have to worry about dropping. Me but, and Riddick in a sidecar. Yeah. That's funny as hell. <laughs> He's got his Riddick goggles <laughs> oh, on. Yes. Oh, man, I wish I could get him to wear goggles. 
That'd be cool. I think you could. He's so cool. He's so chill. Now, he hates his birthday hat there every oh, year. Oh, that's right. This is little cardboard right. b- pointy birthday hat. He hates it. <laughs> he'll put he'll tolerate it in long because he knows I want to take a picture. Take a picture. Yep. Now, if I give him his ice cream, he'll forget about it while he's eating that ice cream cone. Yes. I love him in that hat. And he, you know, he looks so pitiful. <laughs> he thinks it's like, like his torture. I went and got like him food. I, exactly. I went and got him food the other day, and the woman said, uh, we have a sale on you know dog clothes or whatever. I said, you got anything to fit a 110-pound German Shepherd? She's like, eh, probably not. But I wonder if it made me think, would he wear like a shirt? I think like, he would, dude. I, really I don't know, because do. there's some like cool Star Wars Oh, stuff dude. and all kinds of stuff. Can totally see that. There's all kinds of cool stuff out there. But anyway, we're we're rambling. We're now good. we're rambling. Yeah, we're good. I think so, we put in a good hobby podcast. I think so. So yeah, let us know in the comments of of YouTube. That's where we read comments, by the way, um, and everywhere. But uh, yeah, let us know what what your hobbies are or were, and uh, I don't know what you learn from them. I'm so sure we, we somehow end up getting on some kind of tangent about everything. That's what I like. Exactly. And it's not really never us, about what we talk no. to start about. <laughs> and I know that somebody's going to put something in the comments that are hobbies of ours that we forgot. Totally. Oh, yeah. There's been, I, yeah. I, I purposely made this a shorter list. Yeah, because I know I have, you like shooting pool and oh, stuff. Oh, man. Like I've that. got yeah. so many things. And if the you new house out, is going to have a pool table. Yes, absolutely. I think. I don't know. I don't know if this new this house won't. I don't know if it will or not. The other one would have for damn sure. <laughs> yeah, it would I, have. I, I, so I still, I'm still there if I want it. Uh, anyway, so yes, we'll wrap it up and let it fade. To black. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> bye, bye.